Hey, are you ready to learn a few more things about talking with God and hearing the voice of God in your life? I'm always ready for that. And um, I, in my life, it might be different from yours. And I don't want to ever assume that you're coming from where I'm coming from. I learned about communicating with, a, with, a, with my father from my earthly father, who wasn't a good communicator. He's a good man. He's a very good man. He loved me very much. He always took care of me. He always provided for me. He was there for me. He was a present dad. And I'm so grateful for that. But, but my father was the, the son of a Arkansas sharecropper, a failed Arkansas sharecropper, which is the worst kind to be. And he was called out of that life to go to World War II, where he had some very difficult experiences that brought him home, I think, emotionally stressed out and even, I would say, damaged. And he didn't know how to communicate with his kids. He loved us. He took care of us. But he never really figured out how to talk to us. So that talking wasn't a, a deep part of our relationship. We would do. We wouldn't talk. So I kind of came into it all at a disadvantage because I didn't know much about what a relationship with a dad conversationally should be like. But blessedly, I learned that God desires a, a communicating relationship with me even more than I desire it with him. Because that's the way a father is. When my children were small, I remembered literally them being crib babies and looking at them and wondering, I wonder what his voice is going to sound like. I wonder what her laugh is going to sound like. Because they're not there yet. I wonder what it's going to be like to have a conversation with this human being a few years down the road. And even more, as an adult, I actually thought about those things. Now that they're all adults, I just love communicating with them. And I try to do it more frequently than they probably want. I'd text them and call them every day if I didn't think they'd get mad at me. But I love doing that. And your father, your heavenly father, longs to communicate with you and to have you communicate back to him. So understand that, first of all. I think that I have a propensity as a pastor, teacher, to try to give out too much information sometimes. And I kind of struggled with yesterday. Am I just given too much information? And as I sat down to get ready for today, I realized that I've got all of this information that I want to take from my brain and put into yours, and, and it just becomes a lecture. And that's not what either of us are looking for here. So I'm not going to do that. When we're all done, if you want more information, you let me know, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you where to find it. I'll tell you what, you know, what, what I read, what helped me, and it'll maybe help you too. But I want you to know how to communicate with your father. That's what I'm interested in because it's the most dynamic and vital relationship that you'll ever have. It's the most exciting relationship. I, I believe that hearing from God is always the best thing that could ever happen. Even if he's having to chastise you and correct you. Because when you hear him speak to you, it means there's hope. There's always hope because God's in it with me. It's like I was talking to you yesterday about buying that car. When God whispered to me, this is the one, this is the one you've been praying for, buy this one. I, I didn't worry about the car anymore. I was pretty sure the transmission wasn't going to fall out, fall out. This is the one God pointed to. And it's proven to be true. I want you to learn to hear the voice of your Abba, your daddy, your spiritual heavenly father, because it will be the best relationship, the most solid, positive relationship you can ever have. You've got to understand some things about God in order to have that relationship. You have to understand that he is holy, that he is righteous, that he is pure, that he is eternal, 
that he is always present every moment of your life, that he knows the hard things and the bad things about you, as well as the soft things and the good things about you. And he loves you anyway. You need to know that he's not, he's not wanting to talk to you so he can yell at you. He's wanting to talk to you so that he can impart his love to you and knowledge to you so that he can guide you in your life so that you'll go the right way. And most of all, here's a big thing that you need to understand, whether you're talking about learning to hear God's voice or talking about anything else. The first thing that God seems to want in our lives is to save us. And thus he sent Jesus to do that. And once you've accepted Christ, once you have been saved, the next important thing God has in line for you is he wants to make you like Jesus. He wants you to conform to the image of Christ, to be holy like he is holy, to be pure like he is pure, to have right motivations like he has right motivations, and to live out a life of right actions like he lived out a life of right actions. That's what God, that's the second thing God wants in our lives to make us like Jesus. So by and large, the things that he directs us to, the things that he tells us to do, are to accomplish those two purposes. First, he will call you to himself through his spirit for salvation. And once you've trusted him as your savior and you're following him in your life, you're following him, the next step is he wants to make you like his son. So when you have questions, and needs, he wants to hear about them so that he can direct you and make you like Jesus. God wants that for you. He's not going to trick you, and he seldom makes small talk. I do believe that there's a time or two in my life I could point to where I think God spoke to me and told me something that just made me laugh, and I think it made him laugh too. It didn't require anything of me, but he pointed something out that just cracked me up. And I'm pretty sure it was God both of those times. But that's not the normal everyday conversation with God. He's not here for small talk. He's here to help you conform to the image of Christ. But you have to remember, he's holy, he's pure, he's perfect, he's eternal, he's good, he's righteous, he's all of those things. And he expects the same from you. He expects you to understand that you have to walk out the truths of Scripture. So you have to know, I said this yesterday, you have to know, study, and prepare by knowing, by, by reading and meditating on Scripture. Is God ever going to tell you to lie? No. But the enemy will try to trick you by mimicking the, the prompts of God and say, but you know what? If you lie, you won't hurt this person's feelings. It's okay this time. That's not God. He said, don't lie. Don't ever lie, ever. He didn't say there's exceptions to this rule. So when you hear that inner voice saying, it's okay to tell this lie, it's not. That's not God. God tells you to give your employer a full day's work. So is it okay to take a few minutes off and to just go back in the corner someplace and read your Bible and pray while you're at work? God said, Jesus taught us in the parables, we're to give our employer a full day's work. So no, it's not okay to go off and have your quiet time at work. You, you should have your quiet time. You owe that to yourself and to God, but you owe him your time. Because he expects you to honor your commitments at work. See, most of the time hearing God isn't hard in that we feel the prompts in our lives. We just don't know that that's him that's speaking. But when we hear something that conflicts with scripture, do that, that's not God. That's the enemy. But when we hear something that confirms, that is confirmed through scripture, that's God. Do that. Most often, it's backed up by scripture. Now, tomorrow we're going to talk about, about channel one and channel two when it comes to hearing God. Put that thought on hold. We're going to discuss it tomorrow.
But right now, I want you to understand that God wants to speak to you, and he'll usually speak to you in terms of yes or no. He won't usually argue with you about something. God's never argued with me about anything. He's told me what to do. And if I won't do it, there's generally a price to pay. Not because he's going to beat me, but because I made a dumb decision and it's going to hurt me. And when I obey him, I usually reap solid rewards because the scripture says, you will reap what you sow. So to do what God prompts you to do echoes the voice of scripture and you will reap goodness then. Always do what the scripture says. And always know that when you think you're hearing the voice of God, if it's not backed up by scripture, it's not him, if it conflicts with scripture. So get that, understand that. Now there's a thousand different things. Okay, not a thousand, just a hundred different things, spe specific things that you can know about the way God speaks. And we don't have time to go through all those. So I'm giving you the important stuff that God speaks to you as a loving father. So when you pray and you ask him something, listen for the voice of a loving father. Just try this, this simple prayer. God, do you love me? And then be quiet and then be still and just wait for, wait for that answer from God that comes to your heart, comes to your mind. And if the answer is no, you're not hearing God yet because he tells you in the Bible he loves you. God, do you love me? Ask him the easy questions and learn to hear his voice. You don't have to ask him the hard questions yet. But he wants to tell you he loves you. He wants to assure you that he's there for you, that he's not wanting to hit you, that he's not wanting to hurt you, that he treasures you. He wants you to know that his wisdom is there for you. So he says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That's in the Psalms. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I'm sitting here in our auditorium right now and I'm hearing thunder. And that means somewhere out there, there's lightning. The Bible tells me that God directs every lightning bolt and tells it where to go. And the fact that he didn't send it right smack through me a minute ago was because he loves me and he loves you. He doesn't wish harm on you. He wishes good on you. But sometimes bad things happen in this world because we messed it up with sin. And if lightning takes me out today, don't say, uh-huh, uh-huh, I told you, God doesn't speak. Sure he does. There's something to learn even in that. But friends, I so badly want you to understand that the devil will lie to you and will tell you every evil in the world, making it sound like good because he wants you to think God's telling you to do wrong and God is not. So like I said, Satan will say to you, it's okay to lie then you won't hurt anybody's feelings. It's not, that's not pleasing to God. It's okay to have your quiet time at work. It's not, not if you owe them that time. It's not pleasing to God. Don't get tripped up listening to the enemy. Learn the word of God so that you'll always know that what you're hearing is consistent with the voice of God as it's spoken through the Bible. That is so important. It is so key. You cannot get around that. It is absolutely true. And then listen for a voice of love. God, do you love me? God, how can I love my wife today? Tell me something I can do that will bring her joy. How can I love my kids better today and bring them joy while at the same time teaching them to love you? Ask God questions like that and see what kind of answers you get in your spirit, in your I wanna say head, sure, he'll speak to your head, but remember, it, it can't be your thoughts, it's gotta be his prompt. We'll talk more about that tomorrow in channel one and channel two, so you'll be back. Tomorrow's really important, all right? It's probably where we're gonna wrap this up. Father, thank you for this good day. Thank you that lightning bolt didn't hit me, it went where you directed it. And now I wanna go with the rest of my day, mentally and physically, where you direct me. And I want my friends to do that too, so guide us. And thank you for loving us enough to speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys are great. You're awesome. Don't forget it. 
God, do you love me? He does. And he loves you too. See you tomorrow.